Question. Is it the just only, or have sinners and even infidels guardian angels? Answer. It is the common belief that not only just persons have guardian angels, but even sinners and infidels. Indeed, it would appear that sinners and infidels should more certainly have them than just people, inasmuch as they stand in far greater need of them. Now, the scripture does not seem to limit the attendance of the guardian angels to those only who are in the state of grace, neither do the fathers, and therefore it is likely that all have ministering spirits. It is true St. Paul seems to put a qualifying clause, sent to minister to those who shall receive the inheritance of salvation. But this does not necessarily exclude others. It is believed that Adam and Eve had angel guardians even before their fall. Our Blessed Lady, it is believed, had an angel guardian. It is considered that those angels that sang over Bethlehem in this Christmas sky at midnight and appeared to the sleeping shepherds were some of the many guardian angels appointed to attend our blessed Lord. Question. Is there appointed to each man individually a special guardian? Answer. That is the general Catholic belief. The scriptures make mention of several persons who were attended by a special angel. Thus, in Genesis chapter 16, verse 7, the angel of the Lord speaks openly to Agar, the angel, it is believed, that evermore was with her, her guardian angel. In Genesis also, there are several mentions of an angel that accompanied Jacob. In Daniel, we read of the angel of the chaste Susanna, and in the Acts of the Apostles of the angel of St. Peter. More openly, however, do the fathers speak on the matter. St. Jerome says, Great, therefore, is the dignity of the human soul, since each has an angel assigned to it as its attendant. The Council of Florence, in its twentieth session, approves of the epistle of St. Basil, which declares the same doctrine. And lastly, much more fully, is the munificence of God and his special interest in each one of us manifested by thus appointing to each of us a special angel to care and guard and inspire us. When does this guardianship commence? Answer. With the first moment of life, each soul, says St. Anselm, as long as it is in the flesh, is in the custody of an angel. From the moment of conception, man is a wayfarer here below, as such is exposed to the assaults of the demon, long before he has attained the use of reason or even left his mother's womb, and as such is consequently handed over to an angel's care. From the moment the soul, which is the image of the eternal God, vivifies and ennobles the body, from that moment an angel waits on that image of the everlasting God. Therefore, our blessed Lord says, Do not despise one of those little ones, long before they have attained the use of reason, for their angels always see the face of the Father in heaven. And that guardianship ceases not till death. After death, since man is no longer in a state of probation, the guardianship in the strict sense ceases. But it is piously believed that a relationship exists, especially if the soul be saved, between that soul and its attendant guardian angel for all eternity. St. Bonaventure asks the question whether the guardian angel withdraws his protection on account of obstinacy and sin. And he answers it by saying that the angel never deserts any person no matter how obstinate in sin, so far at least as trying to withdraw him from sin. But he will not be as pressing in urging him to good. The wicked angel, he says, never gives up tempting a man, no matter how steadfast he may be in doing good. And since the good angel is no less ready and desirous than the wicked, it may be fairly concluded that he, on the other hand, never deserts the man who even continues obstinate in sin. The worse a man is, the more prone he is to fall into sin. But the more prone to fall into sin, the more need of a hand to withdraw him. And therefore, the more appealing is his claim on the angel's guidance. Again, a doctor never leaves his patient while there is life, although his case be hopeless. But our spiritual guide and doctor is God's angel, and he surely is more anxious for the welfare of our soul than the physician for the health of our body. Therefore, it is to be expected that he too continues with us to the end. And even when all hope is past, the doctor is still consulted as to food and medicine and advice, 
what will ease the body and soothe the pain. But the case of a soul can never be so absolutely hopeless, depending as it does on the bounty of God's grace. It is therefore to be assumed that no one, no matter how obstinate, will be deprived of the angel's protection while he is in this life.